Currently working on this Hyundai, it's got the engine management light on, customer complaint of cutting out on the road, down on power, um, starts again eventually and then cuts out after a while. Fault code that's stored is P0335, crankshaft position A, circuit malfunction. I'm going to be going through the steps I use to successfully diagnose and fix this fault and also show and share information related to two wire crankshaft position sensors. <laughs> Crankshaft position sensor waveform on a Hyundai. This is before sensor replacement. I'm gonna bring up the RPM. So this signal is completely out. I knew instantly as soon as I hooked up the scope that this crankshaft position sensor needs to be replaced. This is not a good waveform. This is a bad waveform and I just show on the dash here that the RPM is not even registering, which is also a telltale sign that the crankshaft position sensor has failed. Now, on the scale I have set here is 500 millivolt, which is just giving you a kind of a better picture of what we're actually seeing now. But when it starts to come back and when we get an actual good waveform come through, you need to have the scale set much higher. So you've seen that change there. I need to adjust it now at 10 volt and we get to see a good way in form so the crankshaft position sensor that intermittent fault i captured it on the screen seeing it when it wasn't working right now can showcase when it is and that little up and down that you're seeing which is different than the rest that is the reluctor ring and that's the um timing that's the tdc on that re reluctor ring uh, given the information to the ECU. So with that said, I have 100% confirmed this needs a new sensor. <clears throat> Turn it off. Crank it again. And the waveform's looking okay now, but as you could see in that earlier clip, uh, <clears throat> it was jumpy, it was all over the place, and the voltage range was completely out. So we have an intermittent crankshaft position center fault on this vehicle. So this is the two wire magnetic inductive type crankshaft position sensor. Don't confuse it with the three wire one. The testing processes and the information from one to another are different but what makes um, this one work and how does it function well first of all the inside of this two wire sensor the makeup of it there's a wire coiled around a magnet on the inside of this and the sensor works in combination within a reluctor wheel or also known as a reluctor ring tone wheel or pulse wheel so it's got various names but that's what's going to be rotating around on the outside of it it kind of gives you an idea as that rotates around you're seeing that there's gaps in between imagine if there's multiple teeth here and then maybe singular gaps it's able to read where the engine timing is as that turns around now in combination with the scope you get to see a positive signal followed by a negative depending on how quick that increases. So the sensor works in combination with that reluctor wheel and the induced voltage depends on the engine speed. So the faster that reluctor wheel rotates, the greater the magnetic field disturbance. And so as that engine speed increases, the oscillation, amplitude and frequency also increase uh, or decrease depending on. So when you have that uh, functioning, you have the engine control module using that input to calculate the engine speed position and to use it for the fuel injection and the ignition system. And that is how it, it functions and that is how it works. So what you see in the last clip was me accurately diagnosing a faulty crankshaft position sensor in that Hyundai using an oscilloscope. Now an oscilloscope is always going to be the best testing method when trying to diagnose a crankshaft position sensor fault. It gives you a waveform. It's extremely detailed. You can pause, you can um, break down exact imagery to see if it's in fact breaking down at any stage. If you don't have an oscilloscope though, I'm going to show you a couple of tests with the multimeter that I've also used in the past to diagnose a faulty sensor. Now this is particularly useful if the sensor is dead 
uh, or way out of spec, a multimeter is going to give you a reading that's going to leave you confident to um, replace that sensor. So the two tests are firstly uh, ohms resistance. So you turn your multimeter onto ohms and you're going to do a resistance check. You're going to need some type of reference to what it should be. This sensor itself is around 850 ohms of resistance um, in the um, tech information that I found. That's going to vary depending on make and model of vehicle. They're not all going to be the same. But we have that in mind while we do this check. So 850 approximately in range. I have the test leads already hooked up. Turn the multimeter to resistance and we have 912 to 13 ohms of resistance in it. Now, if I did get that reading based on um, just that result, I wouldn't be condemning the sensor off that. If it was extremely high or if it was open, then I would say absolutely I can replace the sensor. The other one is going on to the... AC voltage, so that wave form there. And using the magnetic tip, you're gonna apply that to some type of metal um, to go in front of it to try and see if it's capable of generating a voltage. Now, one of the common ones I use is the vice. So you can either just wave it in front of it and see if it's doing something or tap it on and off. That's another way of doing it, or you can get some bit of metal, like a screwdriver, and then just wave it close to it. You can actually put the sensor in the vise too, have it secured while you do this test. But as you can see, the sensor is capable of changing and creating a voltage that's readable on a multimeter. So if we were to just use this testing, um, we couldn't condemn the sensor, but I know in fact this was another intermittent failure breaking down when at up to a certain operating temperature and that was seen through the oscilloscope. Now, what are some of the other factors to consider before we replace a sensor? What are some of the things that can cause a fault like that to come on? Well, of course, the reluctor wheel, aka tone wheel, that this picks up off, if it's damaged, if it's um, full of dirt, uh, if it's become detached, loose, which I have seen in the past, that can absolutely cause your issues. Wiring, uh, whether it's wiring of the sensor, um, whether it's the terminals, the connectors on this side, or wiring as we go closer to the engine control module, that can also cause uh, you to have this fault on. Contamination and dirt on this side of it, uh, I have seen that on cam sensors more so than crank sensors, but if you have heavy contamination on the top of the magnet side, of course, it can cause a disturbance. We can give uh, an incorrect signal, which can cause your issues as well. Timing of the engine itself can cause this, uh, this issue, and of course, the sensor itself breaking down, failing, will cause you to have that fault. Some of the symptoms to look out for should you have a failed or failing crankshaft position sensor. Um, number one is uh, long crank time. You can have a long crank time in relation to a failing crankshaft position sensor. The other one is cranking and no start fault, which is a very common one. You can have that cranking no start fault in combination with no fault codes as well. I've seen that a ton of times over my career where um, vehicle not starting and no fault code stored and the crankshaft position sensor failed. In those cases, you could do a, a quick test which may help you and it could help diagnose it and it's to look at the RPM on your vehicle. Uh, you may see no RPM registered at all as you crank it over. Um, if you can't see it on your dash, you could hook it up to the scan tool and look for the engine speed slash RPM and see if it's registering anything as you're turning the engine over. If not, that can be a telltale sign that this has failed. Uh, stalling or cutting out on the road is another very common one. Uh, that's what was happening with this one. So as the vehicle was heating up, it was cutting out 
and um, then as it cooled down it would uh, start back up again. Heat plays a major role in uh, sensor breakdown so as the temperature changes and it gets up to operating temperature it can affect directly on the sensor which was happening in this case. The other one is down on power. Um, you can have a vehicle as it heats up start to get running rough down on power it can also be a crankshaft position sensor and of course the engine light on with any codes that are related to the crankshaft position now that is a breakdown of some of the symptoms to look out for should you have a failed or failing crankshaft position sensor once the new sensor arrived, there's a couple of things I need to do in preparation for the install. One of those is remove the bracket from the old sensor and fit it to the new sensor. A couple of clips and then it slides into position here on the clip. Uh, I always use a bit of lubricant on the o-ring. It just makes it a bit easier to push in. Some of them can be extremely tight um, when fitting the new one. Then it's um, get the bracket and the loom and all that located in the right position. A couple of bolts holding both the bracket and the actual crankshaft position sensor itself. I do take a capture afterwards. Um, this is the new installed sensor and the waveform that it's outputting. And as you can see, there's a dramatic difference from before to after. Even the good waveform we were getting previously was certainly not the same as that one in regards to the range. Afterwards, I clear the fault code, recheck it, and it's ready for a road test. Okay, so I'm just on the final road test with this vehicle now. New crankshaft position sensor has been fitted. All faults are now cleared. Nothing has returned so far. Uh, power has returned. The long crank time that was happening uh, when going to start is now gone as well. Um, performance obviously is all there and no cutting out so far. So it's looking like everything has returned to normal and we have a success with this one uh, a couple of things on it firstly the style of sensor that's in this is a magnetic style so it generates voltage and it's a two wire one so as the um, rpm increases you're going to have the signal uh, increase with that so the voltage increases as rpm increases and we could see that in the new sensor when it was fitted uh, very evident that the old sensor had an issue the waveform when initially checked was completely disjointed and not um, uniform in any way um, and showing that there was uh, that there was a major issue that was also confirmed in the driving where it was going into like a, a limp mode completely restricted and then the customer complained that the vehicle was cutting out on them as well with a very long crank time so with all those symptoms with all those faults it's giving you a clear picture that the crankshaft um, position sensor is an issue and then we have p0335 fault showing that up but without an oscilloscope we would not be able to be 100 percent certain of that and the oscilloscope gives you a clear pattern and shows you exactly what's going on and i'm just going to head back to the workshop now and this job is all complete i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it useful and informative if you did please like share comment and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching